Alright, hello everybody. Today we are back inside the VM for part two of the Emacs from Source series. I think I said in the first video that I was going to do kind of a tour of Emacs completion frameworks, um, but I've kind of decided against that. I, I really have just started using Vertico on, in my setup, and I don't think I can really do justice to Helm or Ivy. Um, so, just to name some, Helm is actually what I used when I first started using Emacs. Um, it's quite nice. However, um, it, it does a lot of stuff. And some of the things it started doing after one of the updates frustrated me. And I, I can't remember what it was now. I probably could have fixed it if I had known more about what I was doing. Um, and I, I'm sure Helm is totally usable. But after that happened, I did switch to Ivy. And I really like Ivy. Ivy looks minimal. Um, it actually looks very, very similar to Vertico. But um, Ivy also has a lot of functionality. But when I heard about Vertico, I figured, well, I'll give that a try. And that's what I've been using since then. Just probably only about a month or so I've been using Vertico. So anyway, I will show off uh, Ivy. Or, sorry, not Ivy. I do mode, because that's actually one of the built-in modes. And I did use that for a while as well. And it's not too bad. It's not the prettiest looking one, for sure, but it's definitely usable. So for those of you who don't know, what I'm talking about with these completion frameworks, uh, they basically replace Emacs default completion. So I want to open my init file, and if I hit Control X, Control F, um, you see this is all that pops up. And it doesn't really, I can hit Tab, Tab, and it just opens up this little um, additional buffer with some options in it. And it doesn't actually, I can't like tab to loop through them. I don't think, yeah, I can't even hit like control N, meta N to cycle through them or anything. It's basically like the shell, um, except the completions pop up in another buffer instead of, you know, just like inline in the shell. Or I guess under your prompt in the shell. So the first thing we want to do um, is we're going to install, well, okay, let me show you what ID mode looks like. So ID mode is built in. I think it means, I think it stands for interactively do things. So it helps with that a little bit. You'll see now, uh, I hit Control X B for switch buffer. And you can see now that I can actually cycle through these. Um, the weird thing is that like the list shifts instead of like my cursor shifting like you might expect. Um, and the bindings for this are <laughs> Control S and Control R. And it also will match um, on substring. So th that's actually really handy. I do is uh, totally usable, in my opinion. Um, scratch. There's something else to mention if you turn I do mode back off. Let's say I want to switch to the scratch buffer. Oh. They've actually fixed that. When I first started using Emacs, and you type Control XB, if you type SC, it would not <laughs> complete scratch. So, like, the only way to get to scratch is you just start typing a star. And I really hated that. So, so actually, Emacs completion is in a much better state now. But anyway, let's go ahead and find our init file. And actually, before I started working on the um, Vertico stuff, the first thing I'd like to do is um, set up the backup files. Because I think, as we saw last time, we're getting these autosave files here. And I would like to move those somewhere else. So you can see, yeah, we have this directory actually. So the variable we're interested in right now, so I'm going to hit Control H V to bring up, or to describe a variable. And I'm looking to the side because I'm looking at my init file from uh, my real installation because I don't want to mess this up. But uh, the variable we need uh, for autosave is auto save file name transform. So this is just an A list. Um, now autosaves are actually not what we're looking at here. These are actually backup files, which we're going to take care of in a second. Um, but they're for uh, they're basically similar. So we want both of those because otherwise it's going to be cluttering our directories. Every time we edit a file, we're going to end up with a backup file like that. Or if uh, if Emacs closes, we'll end up with an autosave file in the same directory we're working in. So we want to go ahead and set queue this auto save file name transforms. Uh, and for that, I just hit um, alt slash 
And you can see at the bottom of tell, it says that expansion was found in help. So if you have help for a variable open and you start typing it, um, it can autocomplete it, basically. The binding there is uh, meta slash d abrev expand arg. So pretty cool. Pretty handy to know. And as the documentation says, um, somewhere it tells you about directory. I know what it's supposed to be, but I, I like to see if we can find the stuff in the documentation itself. Error expression. Okay, well, anyway, it's uh, it just takes a regular expression. So if we wanted to match anything, um, does it even tell us it's an A-list? Well, anyway, the documentation online is a little more helpful. Um, probably the info documentation for this is helpful as well. But we want to uh, set this to an A-list. Something terrible has happened with my VM. There we go. So we're going to set it to an A-list. Uh, we're going to set it to... Uh, we're only going to have one element in our A-list because we want it to match everything. So we're going to associate this regular expression with this directory. We're just going to put it in .emacs.d slash auto save list with a trailing slash. And then I'm not sure what the third field is. T. Transform regex replacement uniqueify. Oh, okay, so it'll construct it so that uh, the names don't clash. Okay, so there's our autosave list handled. And I'll actually format it like this, just to make it look better. And then let's also save backup directory backup directory a list so this one obviously is an a list because it's in the name oh maybe the other one is not an a list actually yeah because i think a list actually look like this with the dot with the uh, the car and the cutter syntax so now we can uh, expand it backup directory a list and we'll do the same thing here Star. Oh, I may have gotten this backwards. This is the one that says a single element dot with the appropriate directory name. Dot dot <laughs> dot next dot d slash backups. Okay. So let's go and delete this. Well, let's check. Yeah, delete this. Execute the mark. All right, so that should take care of all of the backup files that we've been generating. Now we should be ready to jump on into our uh, Vertico setup. So we took a quick look at the default completion. We also took a look at the um, the iDo version, both of which are okay, but um, not as nice as Vertico. So now we would like to do use package Vertico. For now, I'm going to go insert T, and I'm also going to actually start Vertico. So we'll do Vertico mode. And I probably need to refresh package refresh because I haven't been on this VM for a while. So we'll just wait a second for that to refresh. And now we should be able to install Vertico. All right, that didn't take too long. So now you'll see if we want to switch buffers, we get this nice little list at the bottom. And I can go up and down, control N, control P. Um, yeah, so very nice. Uh, what's even nicer about this is when you do something like describe variable. So control HV. Now we get this list that completes like this. And C. Now one thing that the Vertico uh, people like to recommend is that you also add an additional completion style. So there's actually this variable built into Emacs called completion styles. And this is the default value. We got basic, partial completion, whatever Emacs 22 is. Um, yeah. 
prefix completion only operates on the text before the point. That kind of stuff. However, um, a really nice one to add actually comes from an external package. And this is kind of a theme with, with this whole group of packages. So we're going to install Vertico. We're going to install the orderless package. Um, we'll probably end up installing console and maybe even embark. And the theme in those packages is that it's trying to extend Emacs native functionality rather than totally replace it with its own, which is more like what Ivy and Helm do. So that's kind of an appealing philosophy, and it, it seems to be, uh, they seem to be nice packages with regular updates, so I'm having fun trying them out. But the first thing we'll do now is just install package orderless, ensure T, and uh, yes. So we're going to set Q completion styles styles and we're going to make it just orderless. Um, however, something I've realized recently well actually I'll show you guys what happens and then we'll uh, take care of it. Alright, so now we've got orderless. So now I think let's see, I don't really have a good list of things here but yeah, so now you can see that it's searching the whole stream. Um, it's not just matching. I think if we, when we didn't have orderless, like it had to be in the right order. Now, of course, it uh, is orderless. <laughs> so that's very handy. One thing I don't like, though, let me create a another buffer. So you see now, when I do this, uh, when I try to switch buffers. I start typing messages, it doesn't show the capital version because there is a um, lowercase version. And I was getting really frustrated with this because um, I think when I was using GDB the other day, it created some kind of messages buffer with a lowercase m. And then when I was trying to switch to messages with a capital M, it just wouldn't even show up. So what you can do to take care of that um, is you can also set this additional variable um, called read buffer completion ignore case to t. So again, since we're using some of this built-in Emacs stuff, that's just a, nat a native Emacs variable. So now if I type, uh -oh. what? Okay, well that's new to me. Oh, do we not have a message buffer? Uh oh. <laughs> well, I thought this fixed the issue on my machine, but uh, now it appears that that wasn't the problem. Okay. Let's try that back on nil. No. Wow. Okay, well, let's leave that off for now then. Okay. Well, I'm not too sure about that. So, now if, if somebody doesn't show up, try uh, matching the actual case. All right, so we got Vertico, we got orderless installed. Now another interesting package that goes along with Vertico is called Marginalia. So this just adds some additional uh, information when you're switching buffers or finding a file or anything like that. And you'll see that pretty quickly. So see now, in addition to the buffer name, uh, we have like the, uh, I forget what these are called. Yeah, the modification. This is just like some state information about the buffer, uh, the size of the buffer, and then the uh, the type of buffer. So this just gives you some extra information here. Uh, you'll see the same thing. We try to find files. It tells us our, the permissions again, the size, and the time it was last edited. So marginalia is really handy. Um, that's probably going to be enough for now. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to cover. We got Vertico. We got marginalia. We got orderless. Let's see how long. We've already been going for 15 minutes, so I think that's going to suffice for now. The other packages I want to talk a little bit about uh, Embark 
and um, consult can definitely justify videos on their own. And this is basically all the functionality I wanted to really get going with Emacs. Now that we have this, uh, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to do? Region color. Yeah, so now that we have this stuff, let's take care of a couple last things. So the other thing I want to do is set, I want to do some face setting. Because I see in the video, actually, uh, you can see the region, but on my monitor, I, I can't see it at all. So just to show you what it looks like to set a face, uh, we want to set face attributes. So let's look up that function with our new Vertico stuff. Set face attribute. Uh, yeah, so let's do this. If Once I have the region active, if I do describe, describe face, you'll see that the face is just called region. And the background, well, let's go ahead and describe it. So, all right, background. We're, this is what we're going to want to take care of. Goodness, GTK selection BG color. Wow, weird stuff going on. Okay, so what we want to do, set face attribute, um, and then you give it, so we're going to want to set the background. We give it a name of the face as a symbol, so region. We want frame to be nil because that's going to set, yeah, set the attributes for all existing frames. As well as, yeah, this will also make it the default for new frame. Set face attribute region nil. And then we want to set the background to, um, let's pick a nice color. A nice way to pick colors is list colors display. Um, I think I usually make it, let's see. How about deep sky blue? And now you'll see. What? Oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's pretty aggressive, but you're not going to miss it. So there we go. We took care of that. Now, the other cosmetic changes I like to make usually are I like to t turn off toolbar mode. And then I also like to turn off... Um, what is this bar called? I also like to turn off scroll bar mode. Minus one. Disable the mode if arg is negative. So we'll turn off scroll bar mode. We'll turn off toolbar mode. Disable if it's negative. And then I do forget what the last one is called. Menu bar mode. Okay, and that just cleans up our windows a little bit. Alright, I think that's all for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully that gets your Emacs looking a little nicer than it was before. Uh, in the next video, I'll go ahead and set up uh, the last thing that I think is really helpful for uh, moving between windows quickly, which is YNUM mode. And then after that, I will start working on individual language setups. Probably I'll start with Go because that's what I know best. So I'll set up LSP mode and company mode for use with Go. Um, and then after that I should be able to pretty easily move on to other languages such as um, Python and I'll probably do Rust at some point as well. So as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.